Welcome to the Aftermath, and this is the He Said, She Said segment of the Aftermath. This is Mick, the Doctor of Digital, and co-host, Legislative Tiger Kendra. How are you today, Kendra? I'm wonderful. It's not sunny here. It's gloomy and cloudy, but that's okay. All right, so I'm not going to talk you, to you about the San Diego weather. I'll just have no, to just please don't. <laughs> assume what you want. So we're here to talk about interview with Hope Frizzell, and she was awesome. So we had some things that we wanted to bring up. Were there things that you got as a reaction to what Hope had said, Kendra? Yeah. So first of all, Hope Frizzell was a, or is a life coach, and she has been through many, many traumatic experiences in her life, including cancer and divorce and then infertility struggles. So she had just some great knowledge on how you get through many traumas in your life. Ours obviously was focused on divorce and how you handle that personally and then how you handle it with your children. So I thought what one interesting thing, though, because I focused on this when I got divorced was, do I choose a life coach or a therapist? And I, I really yeah. liked how she compared the two. And she broke down the difference of that as well, too, because I thought it was an interesting point. So the life coach is an advocate for your future. And I like that phrase. And then a therapist is someone who considers your past to help healing. And I think, wow, that was a really great insight because seeing it in two different ways, one's for the future and one's for the past, but you may need both. And that was, I think, a really helpful point that she had made. Yeah, I think so too. And if you compare it, I think she even compared it to going to a doctor to fix something that's broken, right? Right? Is the yeah therapist and the life coach is more like your physical therapist, which is helping you move in the future. So I thought that was a good visual to, to compare to. I agree. And it was something that when you think of it that way and visualize it and you see an analogy, which makes more sense because I think one seeing the distinction just from the basic words is hard to understand. So that was real insightful. I also like the idea. I think you were going to mention this too, because I think you liked it was the idea of the parallel homes. Because when we talk about co-parenting, what does that mean? But the notion of parallel, they should be sharing values, but still be along the same lines. It reminds me, I was flying into San Francisco one time and there was a plane off to about a mile or so on one side. And I'm thinking, what are we doing? Are we having a race to the runway here? I mean, what's the deal here? But I guess that's something about San Francisco airport, but it's running in parallel, which is the point. They had two different landing strips. And that is kind of the idea of what she was working on, a parallel. Yeah, I, I like that too. Because co-parenting is you're very intermingled, right? You're constantly talking about different things and you're sharing calendars or, you know, whatever you might be doing. But parallel is you still have your separate lives and you just have the same values and the same ways you're going to parent your child, but it's not intermingled. You're not so intermingled. So I thought that was good too. And it was the notion of your it's similar to being in a business, right? So there's a business where you have to have scheduling and you have to agree on the way that things are. I mean, in like a company, you have to have agree. They call it company culture. It's something like that. So you have to have a similar cultural, a parallel culture in more than one home and two homes. Yes. Yes. So something else that she had said that I thought was interesting that we're responsible for our own actions, be self-aware and that no one is coming to save us. We have to work on ourselves and we have to be whole by ourselves. So if you're looking for something that just all of a sudden something is going to happen, it's probably not. You have to work on yourself, which I think is probably key to having the life coach and a therapist because you have to do the work, they call it, and, and work through it yourself. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Something else she brought up that I wanted to discuss too was... Mm -hmm. What does a divorce eliminate for the children? And that's something very interesting because we hadn't talked about that with anybody. And I think, True. you know, looking at it through the children's eyes and helping them realize that divorces might be a good thing, right? Because mm -hmm. yes, their parents are together, but it might eliminate a lot of fighting, a lot of controversy in the house, a lot of tension for the children. So I thought that was a very interesting way to look at it through the children's eyes. What is it eliminating for the children and talk to them about that and that there are good things coming from the divorce. And also along those lines, because I, I picked up on that as well too, where 
with the technology we have, she talked about keeping the hostile discussions away from the kids. So with texting and Zoom and other things like that, yeah, we have more technology, so you don't necessarily have to have children present, but you know, when they go to bed, they're down for a nap, whatever it might be, you also have an opportunity to use the technology that we have to keep those kinds of more heated discussions out of their ear sight and eyesight. Yes, very true. And if you're any, anybody like myself who has gone through court and they order you to download the court app and pay them an extra $120 a year so that they can make money, <laughs> you also have that technology to utilize as well. Well, I did not know about that because see, this was back you know, <laughs> when the internet was still sort of emerging. I was part of that field as a startup and some other things, but a lot of that wasn't available. So that's news to me. I didn't know that. So yeah, well, there's another way to make money. There you go. Yep. Here's a point too, about dressing yourself. Now here, she made a point about when you get up in the morning, just like you can decide what clothes to wear. She made a point that now you have an opportunity to dress yourself and how you want to present yourself to the world. So I thought, yeah, that's an interesting idea because how you want to approach the world and your day and your children and the situation is, it's like dressing yourself. So pick out the things that you want, pick out the clothes you want. Well, pick out the sort of framework that you're going to approach your day with too as well. So yeah, you get to choose. Yes. Yes. And that's very important after a divorce, right? You don't have to be the same person that you were before. No. And I think you're a good example of that and doing other things because that also meant, yeah, be open to things. So she made a point about whatever it might be for myself. Obviously I've talked about music enough, but there's art, music, journaling, exercising, good outlets when you have emotions to try new things and be open to new things that you may not have had to do before, or you haven't tried before. So those are, those are good ways to Put your energy into things that are positive. And I think that's really a common thread with a lot of our guests that have been on our podcast. It, they, a lot of them have said that, right? Try something new, be mm -hmm. open to it, try exercising. That Those are all common things that all of them have said. So Yeah, no, that's a common denominator. So that might be one of the most helpful things. And then I probably had just one other point that I wanted to make that when you're dealing with a struggle here and you've got more things to add in, but she said about, moving on. And when you move on a different, a new relationship, take some time, which other people have said, but she also said, but perhaps making friendships with the opposite sex. And I think that could be really insightful because while you're angry at a person of the opposite sex, having friendships with someone who is not the hostile person that you're angry with, but you get insight because you understand how the opposite sex thinks. So develop friendships now, maybe for the first time or with someone else. Yeah, I completely agree. Different perspectives are always good. So insights from the opposite sex is good. Mm -hmm. So it was a wonderful conversation with Hope. I really enjoyed it. And our listeners should really go back and listen to the full podcast. They ought to, because now we're just getting a snippet and just our thoughts, but we'd like to know what you think, of course. So if you have not subscribed to The Aftermath, I don't know what you're waiting for. So subscribe, like, share, and positively review on Apple Podcasts in particular. And one note, since it's Christmas, we had a listener who said, couldn't see my Christmas tie, but it's, I don't know if you can see this, but actually you see there's Christmas trees in here and you know, I'm oh, a party animal for Christmas. And just like that great philosopher, George on Seinfeld, who said, I'm the first one in the pool. Yeah. Likewise, I'm the party animal on Christmas. That's a joke. But anyway, hopefully everybody is listening to the aftermath and subscribing, sharing. We'd love to hear your questions and comments. Please keep in touch with us until next time. Day is all.